Hello and welcome to Accounting with Mr H. In this video, we're going to look at standard costing and how to calculate cost variances. Please do remember to subscribe to the channel. Uh, thank you so much if you already have. Like, share, comment on the videos. Let me know what you find useful and what you'd like to see in future videos. And let's get stuck into this question then. Uh, what have we got? Resso Limited manufactures one type of garden shed. The standard costs per shed are, and I can see there, they've told me the direct materials, direct labour. And then budgeted production is 850 sheds per month. So all of that information is what we call the standard costing information. So standard is what they expect to happen. So if you look, for example, at the first bullet point, it says the standard cost for a shed in materials is 11 metres at nine pounds per metre. So that's what they expected to happen. They expected to make a shed, they would need 11 metres of material and that this material would cost nine pounds per metre. That's what we mean by a standard. It's setting the standard, what they expect to happen. And then it also tells me yeah, that they planned in their budgets, they'd expected to make 850 sheds per month. Then they've told me in October, the actual results were, and then they've given me what actually happened in terms of how much they actually spent on direct materials and the direct labor. And they've also told me that in October, they actually produced 890 sheds. And what's required is to calculate each of the four uh, cost sub variances. And variances, if you think about the word vary, how much does it vary by? It's essentially comparing what actually happened with the standard to see how well this company uh, met the standards. So standard, as I say, is what they expected to happen. So after the months gone by, somebody in the business, a manager, manager, management accountant is reviewing it and looking at it to see whether or not they met their standard or how effectively they managed their costs. So let's get under over the first one. So I'm going to do it in uh, this working box here. So here we go, A. So the first one is calculate the material price variance. Now the formulas for these are just something you have to learn. So I'm going to put the first um, formula in, there we go. So material price variance equals AQ bracket SP take away AP. And AQ is actual quantity. SP is standard price and AP is actual price. When we work these out, you need to remember that we are like in this particular one, we're talking about material. So when we say AQ, actual quantity, we mean the actual quantity of material. We don't mean the actual quantity of sheds or units made. We are evaluating the material price variance. So all of the information that we're going to put into this formula needs to be about the materials. So if I look then, the, the material price variance, so the first thing I need is the actual quantity of material. Well, I can see over on the left hand side where they've told me the actual results in October. The first bullet point says the direct materials cost £96,120 for 8,010 metres. So there is the actual quantity of material. They actually used 8,010 metres. So there's that figure. And then in the brackets, the first figure I need is the standard price of material. So I need to know how much the material they expected to pay per metre. And if I go right at the top of the question, I've got that there. It says the standard cost, the direct materials, 11 metres at nine pounds per metre. So, so far in my formula, so let me put this first bit in, there we go. So I know the actual quantity of material used was 8,010 metres. And I know the standard price of a metre of material was nine pounds. What I don't know is the actual price they paid for a metre of material. But using the information they've given me, I can work this out. If I go back to the actual information in October and that first bullet point again, it says the direct materials cost 96,120 for 8,010 metres. So if I divide the 96,120 by 8,010, I get an answer of 12. So that means they must have actually paid £12 per metre. So I can put that into the formula then. 
So I've now got the actual quantity of material was 8,010 metres. The standard price of material was nine pounds. And what do they actually pay for a metre of material? 12 pounds. And then I just solve that equation and I get the answer, which is 24,030 pounds. And then you'll see I've put the word adverse on. When you are doing variances, a variance always needs to have either the word favourable or the word adverse after the figure. Adverse is bad, um, so something is worse than was expected. Favourable is good, something was better than expected. And if we think about this one, when you solve that term equation, you would have got a negative answer. But also, if you look at it, they paid £12 per metre when they'd expected to pay £9 per metre. Well, then that's bad. It's adverse. They've had to pay £3 more per metre of material than the standard, than what they'd expected to, uh, to do. And there's the first one done. And let's go on to B then. Now they're asking me, calculate the material usage variance. So again, we need the formula. Again, something you just have to learn. So I'll put it up there. There we go. So the material usage variance is SP bracket SQ minus AQ. So SP is the standard price, SQ is the standard quantity, and AQ the actual quantity. But again, remember, this is about material, so all of these figures have got to be about the materials. I've already got two of these figures because I've just used two of them in, in part A. I've already just used the standard price and the actual quantity. So for well, the moment, that's what my formula is looking like. The standard price of materials, £9 per metre, and we know the actual quantity used was 8,010 metres. So the only figure I don't know is the standard quantity. So this is how many metres of material did they expect to use? Now, we just got to be a little bit careful here. And this is something you may have um, heard of. And we've got to consider the fact that the amount they um, planned to produce is different to the amount they actually produced. If you look over on the left hand side, the budgeted production was 850 sheds per month. But then it says the actual production was 890 sheds in the month of October. So I've got a situation where the budgeted production is different to the actual production. And what that means is I have to what's called flex the budget. I have to flex um, one of the figures in particularly this, uh, the standard quantity. So you'll see I'm putting some notes in this green box. So if you have a question where the actual production is different to the budgeted production, we need to flex the budget. In other words, we need to adjust the standard quantity. And it just it literally is just so that we are comparing like with like. So we're flexing just means, as it says there, adjusting budgets to different production levels. And in order to adjust this SQ, here's the formula. It's going to be the SQ per unit multiplied by the actual production. What I've got to remember is if you go back over to the formula, the actual quantity of material they used was 8,010 metres. That was to make 890 sheds. So in order to have a fair comparison, I need to work out how many metres did they think it would take or did they expect it would take to make 890 sheds? I don't want to do it on 850 sheds because then how's that fair? I'll be comparing the materials they thought they need to make 850 sheds with the materials they used to make 890 sheds. That's not a fair comparison. If you've made 40 more sheds, chances are you will have used more material. So I have to compare like with like, and that's where this flexing comes in. So if I look at this formula again then, so it's the SQ per unit multiplied by the actual production. So the SQ per unit, so if I go to the top of the question, uh, where it talks about the standard cost, the direct materials, it says 11 metres. So they expected to need 11 metres to make one shed. That's the standard quantity per unit per shed. But then I need to multiply that by the actual level of production, which was 890 sheds. So there's my working 11 metres multiply 890 sheds means that to make 890 sheds, they would have expected to need 9,790 metres of material. So that is my SQ. And I can put that in the formula and then I can uh, solve it. And there's my answer. 
So the material usage variance is £16,020 favourable. So just to recap, we've compared like with like because both the SQ and the AQ are now based on 890 sheds. And what it tells me overall is they'd expected to need 9,790 metres to make 890 sheds, but they actually only used 8,010 metres to make 890 sheds. So in terms of material usage, that's why we've got a favourable subvariance because this is a good thing. They used um, 1,780 uh, fewer metres. So when I multiply that by nine, it's if you like save them or they've ended up spending 16,020 pounds less than expected, thanks to the fact that they've used less, me uh, less metres to make each shed. On to the next one then, calculate the labour rate variance. The good news about labour rate variance is it's the same formula as material price variance. So you can kind of pair them up when you're trying to learn them. So material price, that's to do with how much uh, we're paying for the materials. Labour rate, that's to do with how much we're paying the labour, the workers. So the ones that are to do with paying either materials or labours, they're the same formula. So there it is, the labour rate variance equals AQ bracket SP minus AP. But now remember, we're talking about labour. So all of these figures, the AQ, the SP and the AP need to be about labour. So if I look at the information then, uh, do I know the AQ of labour? Yes, I do. If you look at the October stuff, it says in October, uh, the actual results were direct labour cost 42275 for 2,225 hours. So there is the actual quantity of labour. They used 2,225 hours. The standard price of labour, if I go up to the, the uh, standard cost information about direct labour, it says three hours at 16 pounds per hour. So there's my standard price. They expected to pay the workers 16 pounds per hour. So, so far my formula is looking like that. Actual quantity, 2,225 hours. Standard price, they expected to pay £16 per hour to the workers. And then I need to work out the actual price. And similar to how I did it with the materials, they've told me the direct labour actually cost £42,275 for 2,225 hours. So if I divide those, then I get an answer of £19. So they've actually paid their workers £19 per hour. And then I can finish the formula. So put that £19 in, there we go, solve it, and there is the answer to C. So again, it's adverse because they'd expected to pay workers £16 per hour, but they actually paid them £19 per hour. So from a cost point of view, this is uh, worse. Um, they've spent more on labour than they'd expected to, than the standard. Uh, which is why we get this adverse variance of £6,675. On to the last one then. And calculate the labour efficiency variance. Let me put the formula up. And what you'll hopefully notice is this is the same formula as the material usage variance. So material usage is about um, how well we use the materials, how much material we use to make each shed. Labour efficiency is about how uh, productive the workers were, how quickly, if you like, they managed to make each shed. So the two, vari the two variances that are about price, paying for materials, paying for rate, which was part A and part C, are the same formula. And the two var sub variances that are about like how well you use something, either materials or the workers, they have the same formula. So labour efficiency variance then, SP bracket SQ minus AQ. Again, just like in part B, I've actually got two of the figures here from part C, so I can put those straight in. We know that the standard price of labour was £16 an hour, and we already have worked out that the actual quantity of labour used was £2,225 uh, to hour, sorry. So all I've got to do now is work out the SQ. Remember what we talked about in part B, I'll put the uh, notes up again to remind us, there we go. We need to uh, do a bit of flexing. We need to adjust the SQ so that we can compare it fairly with the AQ because that AQ is based on 890 sheds being made. 
So we need to get an SQ that is based on 890 sheds. So it's the same formula to flex this. So the SQ per unit multiplied by the actual production. So the SQ per unit, if I go back at the top of the question, the standard cost in terms of direct labour was three hours. So they expected it to take three hours for the workers to take three hours to make a shed. Multiply that by the actual level of production, which was 890 sheds. So three hours multiplied by 890 equals 2,670 hours. So that is my standard quantity. That's how long they would have expected it to take in labour to make 890 sheds. And then I can put that into the formula to finish the formula. There we go. Solve the formula. And there I get my answer. So again, this one's favourable because the SQ was 2,670. But actually, it only took 2,225 hours. So it didn't take the workers as long to make each shed um, as they um, had expected it to. So we end up with a favourable cost variance of £7,120. Obviously, all different questions can be presented in different ways. So what you have to divide or what you have to multiply to work out the standard costs and actual um, costs uh, might vary from question to question. But the formulas will stay the same. And if ever the budgeted production and the actual production are different, you need to just take care when you're dealing with the SQ, the standard quantity because you'll need to do this flexing. Hope that's been helpful then, giving you some ideas on standard costing, the cost variances. Um, again, please do do remember to subscribe uh, to the channel, like, share and comment on what you'd like to see next.